My name is Joe Peroni, and this is the Rise Above Project. And today I wanna to talk about the fear of abandonment, the fear of rejection, and some of the unseen problems that come along with those types of issues. Now, I've been encouraged to do this show because of the many clients I've had over the years that struggle with these issues. And it's a very difficult journey for them to have to go through this. And we'll talk about that more as we go. For example, let's say you're the type of person, you're in a relationship as an adult, and you seek peace, you seek tranquility, you seek contentment in your relationship, and you are completely averse to confrontation. You don't want to see your partner hurt in any way. Maybe you're even the type that you would rather hurt yourself or diminish yourself in some capacity as long as you don't hurt your partner. And this can lead to a lot of issues. Now, as I'm thinking about this, just recently I had a client who is going through this journey and it's been a long time. And just recently, what she decided to do is to draw some boundaries. And with her boundaries, she says that she's not going to participate in any conversations where she's being demeaned, uh, being put down, being screamed at, yelled at, and cursed at. And this is a good beginning. The, if you want to call it this, the aha moment for her was when she was starting to realize that throughout the relationship, when her partner was verbally abusive, her reaction to it was to be nicer and more caring and more agreeable and more submissive. And what this did was, ironically, is to encourage her partner to be meaner and nastier and yell more because not only did he get his way, but she became even more submissive. So in a sense like this, because she sought peace and tranquility in the relationship, and she valued the connection and the attachment to this relationship more than her own happiness, she put all her needs aside. And when you're dealing with a type of person that if you want to give all the time and they take all the time, there's not a guarantee that they're going to reciprocate in any way. And herein lies the problem, because if you have fear of abandonment and fear of rejection, there's a pretty good chance that when you draw a boundary, that a partner might not go along with that boundary. They might get even more angry and nasty. They might think, oh, there's a boundary. I need to be controlling. And therefore, it could create even more of a disturbance. So it takes a tremendous amount of courage. If you're the type of person that's had a childhood that would lead you to fear of abandonment and fear of rejection. And now you're an adult in a relationship. So it takes a lot of courage to be able to stand up for yourself because what you're doing is, is that you're getting one step closer to the thing that scares you the most. It's like the third rail. And the thing that scares you the most is the end of that attachment and relationship. So before I get to some of the unseen problems, let's talk about some common symptoms of abandonment issues. Now, some of these actually are unseen as I go through these. There's a ton of them. I think I'm gonna keep it to about three so we can have a, a relatively short show for today. So the first common symptom of fear of rejection and fear of abandonment would be people-pleasing. Now, I know that people-pleasing sounds good, right? If you're running a business, you wanna please your customers. If you're in a good relationship where it's reciprocal, and it's complimentary, you 
definitely want to try to please your partner. That makes sense. And you want your partner to try to please you. But I'm not talking about trying to satisfy somebody's needs in a good relationship. What I'm talking about here is when you're trying to please somebody who is actively hurting you and you're still trying to please them in some way because you're trying to hold out hope that if you treat them nicer, that they'll treat you better and they won't leave. An example of this could be, let's say there's a burglar or something like that at midnight and he's breaking down your back door and you're obviously in a lot of danger. So you see this burglar and what you do is you hand him over some cash and you just think, well, I'm being nice. I'm making it easier for this burglar. I'll just hand him some money and he'll just politely leave. It, as if a burglar is gonna be okay with that. As if they're not gonna steal your TV, right? They're, they're not going to try to look for more money. They're not gonna steal your jewelry. Of course they probably are, right? It's not like they have a conscience. And something else too, especially if you're a woman out there, if you're ever abducted by somebody or an attempt for an, an abduction is made, you might think that if you act nice and you go along with this person, that he won't hurt you. So if he tries to get you from point A to point B, a person like this might go along with it because they acquiesce to a person who's stronger. But the data clearly shows the opposite, is that you never go from point A to point B. That's where they kill people. So again, you might be the nicest, most loving, caring person in the world and think that the more love you give out, the more love you get back. Unfortunately, in this world, it's not always true. So if there's a situation where you're going to be abducted, fight for your life right then and there. Do not go to a second location. Let's talk about the second symptom of fear of rejection and fear of abandonment. It's called being neurotically naive. In other words, you'll hear somebody say, it's not that bad. Well, they've been in it for so long and it's part of their personality, if it starts when they were a young child, and they unconsciously choose a codependent way of dealing with people or to, again, be overly submissive to people so they don't get hurt. And when you do this, when you're neurotically naive, it's because throughout a lot of your life or during your present relationship, you're not allowed to have feelings. You're not allowed to have emotions, wants, or needs. And you make yourself small. Why? Because it might upset somebody. Now, if you were in a different type of relationship, that might not be the case, right? They could accept your wants and your needs and your, your need to talk and your need to be listened to and someone to show some empathy and compassion for you. But many times, if you're the type of person that fears rejection and fears abandonment, unfortunately, it increases your chances of being with somebody who's going to take advantage of that. I'll give you some examples of somebody or some clients that I've had over the years who have become neurotically naive. I had one client that has to go to conferences a couple of times a year. And he was telling me that he had to open up his computer and have the camera faced right towards his bed all night long. And I would ask him, how does that make you feel? You got somebody at home wanting you to film yourself in bed so she can monitor exactly how many hours he stays in that bed. And I don't know who else could be in that bed as well. And his answer was, well, at least she doesn't make me put the camera on when I go to the bathroom. I think that that's a really low bar to have in a relationship. Same person, we were talking and he said, well, when he goes shopping with his wife, especially at, uh, he'd mentioned Walmart, when he goes shopping with his wife, he has to keep his head down the whole time. And the reason for that is, is because he might have some type of eye contact with another girl. 
and his wife would not want to put up with that. And I asked him about that. What is it like to have to walk around with your head down? I mean, do you think your parents really wanted, you know, when you were born to have a son that eventually would be in a relationship where in order to keep the peace, to keep some type of contentment in the relationship or tranquility that he had to walk around with his head down and be controlled in that fashion? His thought was, well, we only go to Walmart like once a month and it doesn't take that long. It's probably just an hour out of a month that I have to do that. So it didn't really occur to him yet to start making boundaries. I'll give you another example. Uh, this was a long time ago. Uh, I had a friend that uh, showed up at a, uh, a bodybuilding contest of all things that I was competing in and with some of my other friends. And this was such a long time ago. It was when I was, um, let's say, young and stupid. And he had a bruise on his forehead. And everybody, of course, asked him, you know, how did that happen? And he said, well, my girlfriend threw a bottle at me. And we were like, wow, that's terrible. You know, what kind of girlfriend do you have? And he said, well, it's kind of my fault. I didn't duck fast enough. Again, being neurotically naive, he didn't want to face the situation as it was. He would rather take the pain and say that it was his fault for some reason and take the blame for somebody actually throwing an object at his face. Another symptom of fear of rejection and fear of abandonment is perfectionism. So again, there's two sides to this. I'm not talking about the kind of perfectionism where somebody wants to be the perfect doctor, the perfect lawyer, uh, the perfect accountant. As a matter of fact, <laughs> I want the people in my life in those positions to try to aspire for perfection. If I need a surgery, I want the person who is obviously qualified, but someone who really puts their energy into being the most perfect at their job they can be. Uh, like. A, an airline pilot. I, I want perfection. Musicians. I, I love musicians that are trying to write the perfect song, find the perfect chord, the perfect note. I, I can appreciate all that. And as just as a human, as a therapist, as a trainer, I also think that everybody should be pushing to their full potential as a human being before they die. I think that's part of why we're here. But that's not the type of perfectionism I'm talking about. The type of perfectionism that I'm talking about is, is what, that where you do everything possible, turn yourself inside out, do things that are against what you really want to do, just to meet the needs of somebody else or to make sure that there's not another emotional outburst or of some kind. And again, people do this because they don't, they value the relationship more than they value who they are as a person and how they feel. So the more they diminish their feelings and emotions and their thought about being happy, if they can do that, they feel there's more space for their partner and they can hold the relationship together. And when they can do this, again, basically do everything possible under the sun to please this other person, who most of the time is unpleasable, by the way, they think that they can decrease their chances of rejection and abandonment. Now, if you take this, this tract of being overly agreeable, overly conscientious, walking on eggshells all the time, Trying to, in a sense, dismantle an atomic bomb before it goes off. You're going to live a life of anxiety because you're always waiting for the disaster to happen. And then if it does, you're going to blame yourself because you weren't nice enough, caring enough, loving enough, smart enough, beautiful enough. And this is going to do major harm on your self-esteem. And by giving yourself up all the time, it also puts you in the position down the road of having heart disease, cancer, and autoimmune 
problems. Now, just, uh, I think it was yesterday, <laughs> two days ago maybe, I was looking at uh, some of the texts about uh, Jonah Hill. I don't know if you know him, but he's an actor, and I think his ex-girlfriend was somehow released a bunch of his texts. And I found that really interesting. I think I want to go and do a whole show on that, possibly. But for this show, let's just talk about some of the basics on it. So this girl uh, broke up with him. And she's a surfer. And of course, as a surfer, she wears surfing clothes. I don't know what those are, but sometimes those would probably include bikinis. And his texts to her were things such as, if you want to go surfing with your friends, some of them who are men, or if you want to take pictures wearing your bikini, then that's an insult to the relationship. And therefore, that's my boundary. And... I can't be in a relationship with you. Now for her side, she's a professional surfer. So she stood up for herself and said, well, if you didn't want me to wear a bikini, you probably should have gotten involved in a relationship with someone who's a surfer. And if you don't want me to surf, you probably shouldn't get involved with a surfer. And this totally makes sense. And so I'm glad that she was able to stand up for herself. Now, to make it a little bit more personal, let's say somebody like me, over the years, uh, I've been a personal trainer for over 30 years. I train a lot of women. Could you imagine somebody in my life telling me you can't train women when at gyms there are at least 50% women? Like, that would be totally against my whole livelihood. That's impossible. Also, for about 10 years, I've been a National Physique Committee judge. And that's a very highly esteemed position. And in that position, I was there to judge men bodybuilders, men physique competitors, but also women physique competitors and women bikini competitors. Could you imagine somebody telling me after bodybuilding has been my life for, I don't know, since I was eight years old, to say that I can't be a judge based on that there might be girls in the vicinity. Now, if I backed off on something like that, could you imagine what my life would be? So again, the desperate need for validation, the desperate need for connection, the almost a neurotic need to stay attached and hold relationships together at all costs, can put somebody in a very abusive situation. Now, I know there's a lot of people out there that say, would say, well, why would you want to sign up for abuse? I've seen that over and over again. But I think that there's not enough empathy there for the people that were raised in a situation, and we'll get to that maybe in another show, of why people do have such a, a fear of abandonment and rejection starting from childhood in addition, if you have that fear and in your personality traits of the five, one of them is agreeableness and one of them is conscientiousness. So if you're a highly agreeable person with a person who's highly disagreeable, it tends to make you more agreeable. So as you can see how that circular dynamic will work, and it'll, it can cause you abuse. So something that is actually a very positive thing, such as agreeableness, can actually harm you. The same thing with conscientiousness. Doing the best you can, trying to hold things together, being on time, not being mean and nasty to people, being able to be trusted, these types of things. Again, if you're highly conscientious in a relationship where you're being abused, this could be a real problem for you and it can increase your chances of being abused. So here's the other hidden part of all of this. If you're a person who fears rejection, if you're a person who fears abandonment, Most of the time, in order to keep the peace in a relationship, 
you abandon and reject yourself. That's the thing that really needs to be worked on. Because starting as a child, for example, if you are raised by a caregiver that, say, has a drug or an alcohol problem, that is just not present for you, that has a chance of going off at any time with violence or emotional outbursts, you're going to walk on eggshells trying to make your parent have a good day. You want to make sure that they're not going to be mean to you. So yes, you might be 10 years old and you might be combing your mother's hair trying to make her feel good. You might be nine years old trying to make your dad lunch because you want to get on his good side. And through that, as you get older, you tend to give up more and more of yourself to hold these relationships together to the point where when somebody comes to my office and I ask them an existential question such as, who are you? They don't have any idea because the answer to that question is, is that they are whoever they need to be in order not to be abused. And so they give up all of their interests and their wants and their needs at the expense of making sure that they stay safe. So it takes a lot of courage for a person like this as an adult to start making some boundaries. And here's another interesting part. If you stop somebody from abusing you, there's a good chance that that other person will leave the relationship. Think about that for a second. Because if you stop somebody from abusing you in the relationship, there's a good chance they will leave. That means that that person will only stay in the relationship if they're allowed to abuse you. Let that sink in for a little while. Because while a lot of these people who fear rejection and fear abandonment, they conceptualize themselves as being overly loving and overly nice and overly empathetic, maybe they are. That's true. Maybe. Let's give them the benefit of the doubt and say that they are. However, when somebody is not treating you right and you're afraid to make a boundary, you're afraid to stand up for yourself, that's not because you're nice. That's because you are petrified of a confrontation with another person where you might have to face ending that relationship, ending that attachment, and spending some time alone. And then it starts to cycle over again where you're afraid of being rejected and abandoned. But the first part of that is you should not be abandoning yourself to keep the relationship together. Now, if you're in a relationship and it quote unquote works because you have acquiesced enough, you have been submissive enough, you have been the ultimate slave to the ultimate master, you're still not going to be happy because you know you're abandoning yourself. And then you're going to have a lot of anxiety and depression for the rest of your life. And you may not know why. And that's the unseen problem. Going along to get along and abandoning yourself will cause you a lot of mental health issues down the road. And there's a pretty good chance it's going to cause some physical issues as well. So my name is Joe Peroni. This is the Rise Above Project. Hopefully this has been beneficial to you in some way, even though it may have been harsh in some areas. Thank you for listening. Please subscribe and tell a friend. Thank you.